everyone, here is my birthday polynomial example, just in case you wanted to hear those instructions again, or, you know, maybe it's easier than reading the paper, because it's pretty cluttered. So here's my birthday polynomial. My birthday is June 29th, that's 0629. Um, so, I have an x squared. That x doesn't have any number with it because I have a 0. So whenever I have an, a 0, you should just have a regular x. I decided to square it. I actually started off with a, cute, with a 3 as a power, but I didn't like how it looked like when I put it into decimals. So as a 2. Okie dokie. Next, I have a x plus 6 for June, x minus 2, and x plus 9 for 29th. Um, I messed around on decimals to see whether I liked pluses or minuses, and this is what I ended up liking. I liked the pattern of plus minus plus. And here is what decimals gave me. I did have to adjust my domain and range, so I made my x's go from negative 10 to positive 10, and my y's from negative 3,000 to positive 3,000. Happy to show you how that works. All right, next I'm talking about my polynomial, so I'm going to do a lot of flipping back and forth. It's an odd degree with a positive leading coefficient. How do I know? Because its arms are opposite, that makes it odd. One uh, right arm up means it's positive. Next, what I have listed without flipping back are my relative maximums and minimums. You get that by pressing on the maximums and minimums in decimals, okay? Um, and they just pop up. This is, a, <laughs> this is a screenshot of it, so they're not popping up, but if you click on it in decimals, they do pop up. I do the same thing for my y-intercept. I click on my y-axis where we cross. This is the only time we cross the y-axis, so 0, 0 is my y-intercept. And then lastly, what I have listed on that slide are my real zeros. Let's make sure I'm not missing anything. Correct. Okay. So my real zeros are where I cross the x-axis. So I cross it 1, 2, 3, 4 times. Um, also on Desmos, you can click on those x-intercepts and the points will pop up exactly how you need to write them down. By the way, yes, 0, 0 is both an x and y-intercept. That is true. It, it can happen and it will happen to, to some of us. Okay, so here's all that information written down. All right, next I talk about end behavior and domain and range. So I'm going to go back to my slide and talk about it with the image, and then obviously I have it written down right here. All right, end behavior. So first I'm going to look as x approaches positive infinity. That means I'm looking at the right end, so I'm on the right side, because this is positive. So what's happening with the right arm? I'm going to trace it. If you see how my mouse is moving, it's going up. That means positive infinity. So as x approaches positive infinity, g of x, my function, approaches positive infinity. Oh, by the way, I named it g of x because it's Miss Gooman. Um, you could name it any letter of x. On the left-hand side, as x approaches negative infinity, take a look. This arm is going downwards. So as the x's are going to the left, becoming smaller, the y's are also becoming smaller. So as x approaches negative infinity, g of x also approaches negative infinity. And that's what I have written down. Oh, but I wrote them backwards. Eh, I guess that doesn't matter. I did the negatives first. All right, domain and range. So this is how I find out domain. Domain is your x's. Um, on the left-hand side, my small side, I go left to right for domain. On the left, I have an arrow on the left-hand side, or like it just keeps going. There's no arrow drawn there, but you can imagine it. And on the right-hand side, going from left to right, I'm also going up for forever. So um, I'm going from negative infinity, from infinitely on the left. Like, can you see how this arm is kind of getting more left and more left? So it keeps going to the left and it keeps going down. Um, and here it's going to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right, as it keeps going up. So going from negative infinity on the left to positive infinity on the right. Next we have our range. Range is our y's. Well, this time we're just looking at up and down. We're going down for forever. So we start off at negative infinity, somewhere down there in the negative infinity land. And we go all the way up here 
to positive infinity. We're just endlessly going upwards. So range is also from negative to positive infinity. If you have an even function, you might have an actual number because you might have the, low, the, most, the, the bottom most number up to positive infinity or the top most down to negative. Okay, um, last thing. Oh, no, sorry, not last thing. Two, two, two more things. Um, this is a going from factored form to standard form. So what you're going to do is you're going to multiply two things at a time. So what I did is I multiplied x plus 6 times x minus 2, combined like terms, multiplied that by x plus 9, combined like terms, and then distributed the x squared to that answer. And this is what I got. On my next slide, you would show your work. This is the last thing that you're going to do. You are going to show me your skills in dividing synthetically. So the question is, is, my, is the expression x plus 5 a factor of my polynomial? Now, you could know that right away by looking at your polynomial. Mine didn't have x plus 5. However, I need to prove it, not just uh, I looked. That doesn't count. So here is my proof. I do this synthetic division. And uh, so instead of plus 5, I write the opposite on the outside. I divide synthetically, and I get a remainder of negative 188. If there's a remainder, it is not a factor. Therefore, I say no. You can even say exactly what I wrote, if that, if that, if that makes you happy, as long as your work is different than mine. Okay. Um, where did I get these top numbers from? You are asking, I hear you somewhere asking, from here, from the standard form of my polynomial. So the 1, the 13, the 24, the negative 108, the 1, the 13, the 24, negative 108. That's why we had to uh, multiply it out and get into standard form. You can't do it otherwise. You can't um, do synthetic division if it's not in standard form. Okay. Um, I hope that clarifies some things for you. Have fun with this. Bye.